Okay, so we are reaching uh, the end of Sefer Bamidbar, and we have shown the final task of Moshe Rabbeinu, and he is told that before he leaves Olam uh, Hazer, before he leaves this world, he has to fulfill a certain, what we can call unpleasant but necessary mission, and that is to take Nekama, to take revenge against Midian. Midian were these people, if you remember from the end of Parshat Balak, who came and gave us a lot of trouble, and they uh, brought a challenge to the Jewish people, which ended up them f- causing uh, many deaths of Am and Klal Yisrael. And therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu said, before you leave this world, it's very important that actually they're samuch, they're connected, actually. Um, and we see two themes connected by the parasha, by the Torah. We know that the ideas are connected as well. And that is, Moshe Rabbeinu was told he's going to be Yosef al going to be gathered to his people, i.e., which is a code word for dying. And that is going to happen, that is going to happen right after he fights this battle of Midian. Now, immediately, when you hear the word Midian, and you hear Moshe Rabbeinu, your uh, antenna should go up, because Moshe Rabbeinu has a little bit of connection to this land of Midian. What is Moshe Rabbeinu's connection to the land of Midian? Right? Right? His father-in-law was Kohen, Midian. He was the priest of Midian. He lived in Midian for quite a while. They hosted him after he fled from Mitzrayim. He marries some wonderful lady called Siporaf, who came from Midian as well. So he has this connection to Midian. And yet, my dear friends, he is told, you are not going to be able to finish your final mission in this world until you take vengeance. Nekama, we spoke about before. We said there is bad vengeance, And there is good vengeance. This, obviously, coming from Hashem, is a good form of nekama. This is going to rebalance an injustice that's been hanging over the heads of the Jewish people, like a Damocles sword for a long time. And he has to finally wipe them out and take revenge for what they did when um, when they attacked the Jewish people physically and spiritually as well. So that's what he has to do. And yet, and yet, something very unusual happens. Although the mitzvah is given to him, and he's got to do it. And we know from last week's parasha that one of the key traits of any Jewish leader or king is that they go first to fight the battles. If you remember the Rashi we mentioned, is they have to go out and come back. Yotzi and Yavi. That means he has to be the first one out. And Rashi brings examples where kings fight battles and the king is there first. He's out there, he's doing his thing. He's not sitting back in his palace, sending out his troops. That's not the Jewish way of battle. He didn't do it. David Melch didn't do it that way. You are sure Ben Nun didn't do it that way. He was also first out in order to fight the battles. You would expect this not to be an exception. And yet it is. It is the final battle before Moshe Rabbeinu leaves Olam Hazer, he sends out Pinchas. And usually, if I'm not mistaken, usually the Leviim are left out of battles and fighting. And yet over here, no, they're also joining in as well. They are taking the Kama for Am Yisrael and Klal Yisrael. So I, I read a fascinating source that says the following. And here is a very subtle and nuanced balance when it comes to dealing with war in general, but even personal wars that we have in our lives. And it goes like this. The mitzvah was for Moshe Rabbeinu. Why is it his mitzvah? Why can't we just leave it to Yoshua? He's going to turn up a little bit later. Why can't he get rid of Midian or give it to someone else? And the answer would be like this. Because had, had Moshe Rabbeinu not been given this mitzvah, what would you say? You would say, eh, you know what? Moshe Rabbeinu comes from Midian, married Midian, right? It's not for him to do it. And therefore, you might mistakenly think that the vengeance against Midian 
should not come at all. No, it does come. And it comes from one of the last people you would expect, Moshe Rabbeinu, who lived there, who was part of that society, who married a girl from that place, from those people, and yet they need to get what they need to get. And you, Moshe Rabbeinu, says the Meshech Chochma, says you need to go and you need to fight and you need to make sure that these people understand the gravitas of what they did. They need to be punished for what they did. When an enemy attacks you, even today, 2024, even if you have partial guilt, even though you are invested in this country, in this land, you still need to be the one that takes revenge. Moshe Rabbeinu had a lot to be grateful for when it came to this place. And yet, Moshe Rabbeinu was told, you need to go and you need to fight. You need to make sure this happens. And yet we see, and the Mesh Chochmah quotes the Midrash, Midrash of Midbar, Midbar, um, the Midbar Rabbah, and it says, yeah, that's true, but Moshe Rabbeinu himself couldn't actually go in and do the fighting, making it too personal. And so he sends in everyone else. But we know a king has to go in. I understand. But even though the mitzvah was his, and he had to direct the troops, and tell them to go, and to fight, and Pinchas, and Levim, they all got to go in. Moshe Rabbeinu. How can you fight these people? They hosted you for a long time. These are the people that gave you your kala. They gave you your father-in-law. Comes from Midian. And if you remember, Vaishma Yitro, Yitro was a Kohen Midian, Choten Moshe, and even he, when he heard about the great miracles that happened from the leaving of Mitzrayim, even he had a little bit of chidudim, even his flesh, says the Torah, Vayichad Yitro, was a little bit uneasy. He knew it had to happen, he knew it was miraculous, but it was still part of his people. So the Torah has an incredible sensitivity. And I'm going to bring this to today's day, mamash today's day. The sensitivity you need to have, the Arkara Tatov, even the worst people sometimes, you need to have a certain amount of gratitude, a sensitivity to the gratitude for what they did. So your job is to wipe them out, and yet there has to be sensitivity. And Moshe Rabbeinu says, I can't personally get involved in this because they hosted me personally. And so, ever else you go, the job's going to get done, the missile's given to me, but I'm going to send Shiluchim in order to do it. You know, it reminds me of something very... Hmm? Yes, also when it came to the first, very, very nice, the first of the Makot, Moshe Rabbeinu was saved by the sand. He was saved by the Nile when it buried the Mitzri, the Nile as well. There's a certain amount of sensitivity you need, even in the throes of battle. Even we see, for example, you go and you want to attack a city, and the people inside are bad people, and you want to go and create a battering ram, or make weapons from trees, even in the throes of the battle, you're about to go in, not a fruit tree. Ain't crazy. We're not a fruit tree. We're about to fight a battle. We're trying to save our lives. Even in the most dire circumstances, there needs to be a sensitivity to how you act, even in war. And by the way, I will tell you, this is a major difference we see today. 2024, when the Jewish army fight, the Kedoshim, the holy soldiers, our brothers and sisters who fight, there is a law of what's called purity of arms that they hold by which is, I mean, if you ask me, it's way too much. But this is the way we fight wars. You need to be sensitive, and it's not just going in and wiping and killing everyone. There needs to be as much targeted killing. And if you look at the statistics in terms of how we go to war, the amount of civilians that we are so careful. Any other nation, Russia today, you think they care? Civilians, they're like uh, chattel, right? They're just... Collateral damage, wipe them out. They're not looking, where are the people? Where are the combatants? Right? Even though our combatants don't even dress like combatants. They dress like regular people. The sensitivity that we have. This, my friends, is a Masora from Moshe Rabbeinu, from Yoshua Benun. I mean, Yoshua Benun. He takes this to a whole new level. He's tricked. Tricked by a nation called the Givonim, who are one of the seven Canaanite nations. And this particular nation were extremely devious by dressing up and pretending they came from a far-off nation and made Yeshua duplicitous, sign a contract saying that they are really not going to be attacked because they came from a far-off land. He signs it, and they're like, nah, 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 nah. We're a givonim. 
we are Canaanim, but you signed, you can't attack us. I know you have to attack all the Canaanite nations, but we made you sign this document, although it was the Mechach Ta'ut. I mean, is there a more non-holdable contract? They pretended they were another nation. Yeshua said, no. That's who they are. They joined our people, just like the Druze. I'm sure everyone heard about this terrible, terrible avla that these Yemach Shemaim Hezbollah took out these poor Druze people. These are people that live in Israel. They're not Jewish. They're Druze. And they join our army and they protect our people. And what are we going to do? We're going to take Nekama. But they're not from our people. They're not our nation. You join our people. You defend them. Just like Yoshua did with the Givonim. He said, you've now joined our people. We signed a contract with you. Although it was done under very, very unfair and unreal circumstances, we're going to protect you. And exactly what he did. When the other five kings came to attack the Givonim, he could have been like, well, I don't need to do with me. I'm not attacking you. He went in and he rescued them from these five kings that came from the Melech Yerushalayim to go and attack the Givonim. That is the high standard that we have when it comes to protecting those people who stand with us. Lahavdil, look at the difference between this murderous sinwa yamach shema. He should be caught soon and brought to great justice, hopefully by us and definitely by Hashem very, very soon. Very, very soon he should be brought for justice. And let me tell you, this man is the exact opposite of everything we're describing here in the parasha. Why? Did you know that while he was in Israeli captivity, treated like a melech, if you ask me, he had, I think, a brain tumor. Is this right? He had a brain tumor. And Israeli doctors and Israeli taxpayers paid for this man to have a complete healing that gave him years and years of more life. And then they released him, I think in one of the hostage exchange, they released him. Uh, one guy for a thousand. One guy for a thousand, that's right. He was one of the people, they let him out. You would have thought any reasonable person would be like, you know what, come on. Oh, that's right. I think even the doctor who, who said, he killed the nephew of the doctor who... Unbelievable. You are such an opposite of, of the midat, the midot of, of Jewish people. What does he do? He goes and he starts an entire battle. You say, Rabbi Sholam, you know what? I don't like Jews. I hate Jews. I get it. There's many such people. But can I come along and personally orchestrate a battle against our people after they saved my life? They paid for me to have brain surgery to save my life? No. That mamash is midot sdomino mora. There's no karatatov, there's no gratitude, and he leads the charge to kill the people who saved his life. They think we serve them. That's what they think. It's not they don't see the way we see They don't see the way that the Torah gives us a vision. The Torah gives us a vision of how we treat even the worst people. And Midian were not good to us. And yet, Moshe Rabbeinu said, I know. From my youth, as a baby, I was saved by the Nile. I didn't strike the Nile f to become blood. And the sand, I don't strike it. And that either. And so, we have to have, even when we're dealing with the most dire people in our lives, we are dealing with, and we know we have to wipe them out, there needs to be a certain amount of humanness that needs to come with any battle that we are involved in, and that is exactly how the Jewish people are fighting today with a humanity which is unprecedented in the world today, I think even in human history, right? There's not even a, a question. And yet the Torah demands it of us. Moshe Rabbeinu did it. Yoshua did it. Our great leaders did it as well. And that is what's expected of us even when dealing with the worst people in the world. Hashem should bring vengeance against those people who hurt our people or those people who support our people like the Druze today and bring the Kama against them, Bizrat Hashem. Have a great successful day.